Welcome to worship at Trinity Lutheran Church. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Our gospel this morning comes to us from the chapter of Mark chapter 11, where Jesus enters Jerusalem. When they approached Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will enter, and you will find a tied there, a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it, and will send it back to them immediately. Then they went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. And as they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying that colt? And they told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus. They threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed started to shout, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when Jesus had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection. For the one who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Gospel for today. Gospel of Mark, chapter 15, verses 1 through 39. From the Message. At dawn's first light, the high priests, with the religious leaders and scholars, arranged a conference with the entire Jewish council. After tying Jesus securely, they took him out and presented him to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you king of the Jews? Jesus answered, If you say so. The high priest let loose a barrage of accusations. Pilate asked again, Aren't you going to answer anything? That's quite a list of accusations. Still, Jesus said nothing. Pilate was impressed, really impressed. It was a custom at the feast to release a prisoner, anyone the people asked for. There was one prisoner called Barabbas, locked up with the insurrectionists, who had committed murder during the uprising against Rome. As the crowd came up and began to present its petition for him to release a prisoner, Pilate anticipated them. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews to you? Pilate knew by this time that it was through sheer spite that the high priest had turned Jesus over to him. But the high priest by then had worked up the crowd to ask for the release of Barabbas. Pilate came back. So what do I do with this man you call king of the Jews? They yelled, Nail him to a cross! Pilate objected. But for what crime? But they yelled all the louder, Nail him to a cross! Pilate gave the crowd what it wanted, set Barabbas free, and turned Jesus over for whipping and crucifixion. The soldiers took Jesus into the palace, called Praetorium, and called together the entire brigade. They dressed him up in purple and put a crown of thorns on his head, formed from a thorn bush. Then they began their mockery. Bravo, King of the Jews! They banged on his head with a club. They spit on him, knelt down in mock worship. And after they had had their fun, they took off the purple cape and put his own clothes back on him. And then they marched him out to nail him to the cross. There was a man walking by, coming from work, Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. They made him carry Jesus' cross. The soldiers brought Jesus to Golgotha, meaning Skull Hill. They offered him a mild pain killer, killer, wine mixed with myrrh, but he wouldn't take it, and they nailed him to the cross. They divided up his clothes and threw dice to see who would get them. They nailed him up at nine o'clock in the morning. The charge against him? The King of the Jews. It was scrawled across the sign. Along with him, they crucified two criminals, one on his right and one on his left. People passing along the road jeered, shaking their heads in mocking lament. You bragged that you could tear down the temple and then rebuild it in three days. So show us your stuff. Save yourself. If you're really God's son, come down from that cross. The high priests, along with the religious scholars, they were right there mixing it up with the rest of them, having a great time poking fun at him. He saved others, but he can't save himself? Messiah is he? King of Israel? 
then let him climb down from that cross. We'll all become believers then. Even the men crucified alongside Jesus joined in the mockery. At noon, the sky became extremely dark. The darkness lasted three hours. At three o'clock, Jesus groaned out of the depths, crying loudly, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Some of the bystanders who heard him said, Listen, he's calling for Elijah. Someone ran off and soaked a sponge in sour wine. They put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down. But Jesus, with a loud cry, gave his last breath. And at that moment, the temple curtain ripped right down the middle. When the Roman captain, standing guard in front of Jesus, saw that he had quit breathing, he said, this has to be the Son of God, the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. Passerbys, disciples, children, the religious, the sinner. We all praised his name. We were waving palms. We were saying, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We were filling this space with joyous sounds. It was festive. And new for this year, instead of having the children waving palms, we had the women, the quilters, those that help us decorate our worship space, bringing in something new of a celebration, and that's what we love. But now, after hearing the story of our Savior's death, there's this deafening silence. It's like this cloud that comes over us. It's this emotional darkness. But in the same breath, there is this voice that rips through our deaf silence and closed ears, and it breaks this void. And we hear our Savior, Jesus, cry out with a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me. And it's rather telling because those are the exact same words that Jesus' ancestor David shared in Psalm 22. And they pierce our being. Because this is the only time that Jesus addresses the Lord as my God. Rather than Father, Daddy. It's often known as the cry of the neglect. remarkable because deserted he may have felt Jesus knew that God was his God and I think for believers today for you and for me we can draw great strength for the times that we too have felt orphaned or abandoned and that God was far from us. As awful and painful as it was, Jesus' death is necessary. And it shows that he truly is the Son of God. 
one who is willing to give his life for all who forsake him. The passerby, the disciple, the child, the hungry, the widow, the orphan, the naked, the addict, the lost, the sick, the prostitute, the apathetic, the too busy, and the self-righteous. For us. Amen. been made God's people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again, the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Prayers of the Church for March 28, Palm Passion Sunday. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the Church, the world, and all in need. In Jesus, you came among us as a suffering servant. Give us, give your Church humility, redeem, redeem your people from pride and the certainty that we always know your will. Heal us and empower us to confess Christ crucified. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, mercy is great. great. In creation, life springs from death. Create new possibilities for spring. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. 
Jesus was handed over to the powers of this world and all nations instruct justice that we might serve those in greatest need. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. On the cross, Jesus joined all who feel alone. Abide with those who are condemned to death. Defend those who are falsely accused. Console and strengthen those who are mocked or bullied. Accompany all those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit. Grant respite and renewal. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. We lift before you members of our Trinity family. Bless this congregation's ministry at times of death, those who plan and lead funerals, those who prepare meals, all who offer support in grief. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. You inspire us to confess Jesus as your son. We praise you for the faith you have given people of all places and times. Help us to see, feel, and know the resurrection. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth, earth as in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread. bread. Forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass, trespass against, against us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, kingdom the, power, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We welcome you to this Palm Sunday, this Passion Sunday. For it is the beginning of our Holy Week. We want to invite you to come during our times um, that we are offering services and opportunities of experiential worship this year. On Monday, Thursday, we invite the congregation to come to receive the sacrament of Holy Communion at the altar and receive a blessing. You're welcome to come anytime between the hours of four and six in remembrance of the Last Supper that Jesus would have been receiving and partaking in with the disciples. On Good Friday, we invite you to come. Also, the doors will be open. There will be a cross that you will come and you will come to and you will hear the sound of nailing. We invite you to open yourself up and show vulnerability to leave your sins on that cross by nailing them. And that is the sound that you will hear and you can come in silence, but you'll hear this sound. And as you exit, knowing that you have left your sins, your grievances at the foot of Jesus. And then on Easter Sunday, we awaken from our slumber as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior with in-person worship services at 8 and 11. We ask that you simply pre-register with the church office. And so we also are including a different option of a drive-through communion from 9.30 until 10.15 if you're able and that's where you feel comfortable. All of these services, in addition, will, for Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter, have an online option as well. These are a variety of ways that we can encounter the scripture and live God's word in our lives. We hope that you're able to participate with us. Friends, let us receive our sending, blessing, our benediction as we go forth. We, you and I, are what God made you to be. Created in Christ Jesus for good works. Chosen as holy and beloved. Freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you. That you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Our sending song is Go to Dark Gethsemane.
Let us go in peace. Let us live the story of Jesus. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.